Hi, I'm Quantic Dev, and I have recently published QuanticDev.com using only GitHub pages and Markdown, and decided to create a guide to preserve this precious knowledge in the form of a video, so I can reuse it in my future projects. GitHub Pages is a free and a pretty good hosting service. It's an add-on for the regular GitHub repositories, and you can host your website as well as your code and other things in one repo, which is pretty good. I must warn that GitHub Pages is intended for techies. If you want to do something much simpler, go with Google Sites or Blogger.com or WordPress. In the first part of this video, I will discuss the strengths and weaknesses of GitHub Pages. In the second part, I will deploy a brand new website using GitHub Pages and a simple markdown. Everything will be done through the GitHub's UI. I will demonstrate a sample React website hosted on GitHub Pages. Now let's start with QuanticDay.com. I host QuanticDay.com on GitHub Pages, and here is how it is looking right now. After I published, I made several hundred changes to the website, and every time it got deployed with no problems. I have the source code of the website along with the articles on a public repository on GitHub. All the articles are written in Markdown, so people can easily contribute to it. You can even edit the articles directly on the GitHub's UI. Currently, QuanticDev.com has a small number of regular visitors, and it has been working a treat. Recently, one of my articles reached the front page of Hacker News, and the traffic to my website exploded. Even then, I had no hiccups, and GitHub served my website with no problems or slowdowns. I have also been hosting my personal website, Soygul.com, on GitHub pages for several years now, and it has been working perfectly. I have all my posts as simple static HTML pages, and I had no problems with them up to this point. So why GitHub pages? Most tech people already use GitHub in one way or another. Open source software, hardware schematics, etc. A lot is hosted on GitHub. If you are already using GitHub, you can set up your website without needing to learn any new tools. If you were to use another host, you would have to learn their tools and way of doing things, which would introduce complexity to your workflow. Now let's check out the advantages, disadvantages, and alternatives to GitHub pages. Let's start with advantages. It is easy to set up and it is free. Setting up a new website with GitHub pages takes you about 10 minutes for the first time, and for the next project, it will take just several minutes. It is very easy to set up, and configuration is simple and well-crafted. Bonus, it is free. Though do not abuse it via hosting large files with no content. You can use GitHub releases to host files, which is made for exactly for that purpose, and it is still free. GitHub integration. As I mentioned, GitHub Pages is a part of GitHub, so it integrates nicely with GitHub ecosystem. When you log into your GitHub account to push some code, you already have access to your websites along with it. Automatic deployment. When you commit some code to your repo or change a file through GitHub's UI, your site is redeployed automatically within seconds. After the first setup, you do not need to do anything else. GitHub Editor. You do not need to learn Git to edit your pages. You can directly create or edit files on GitHub's Code Editor. It has great syntax highlighting for HTML and previews for Markdown. Pull requests. Other people can contribute to your website using GitHub pull requests. After you merge that pull request, your site will be automatically redeployed. Those people will show up at the contributors list, which is good for them, and you will get good contributions in return, which is good for you. GitHub issues. People can report errors in your website simply using GitHub issues. They can also request features or start a discussion with it. You do not need to use an external issue tracker. Jekyll and plugin support. GitHub pages have built-in support for Jekyll and plugins. It is one of the best static site and block generators, and it has markdown support. It not only has a ton of great features, but a ton more plugins. You can simply enable plugins by adding their name to your site config file at your repo root. I use Jekyll and Markdown for QuanticDay.com, 
and it has been fantastic up to this point. HTML support. You can opt to generate your pages by hand, good old HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I do this for my personal website, and it has been working great for the last five years. React support. You can use any framework, including React, that can compile to static HTML and JavaScript. If you want to learn how to do it, the link is in the description below. I will demonstrate this in the next section. GitHub Actions. If you need to auto-generate custom RSS files or need to do other chores every time you make a change to your website, you can simply automate them using GitHub Actions. Now, let's get the disadvantages. GitHub Pages is only meant for static websites and it doesn't support PHP, Python, or any other server-side framework. If you need to access a database, you will have to publish the server side of your app on a dynamic hosting provider like Heroku, Firebase, etc., which adds major complexity. In summary, if you need server side processing, GitHub Pages is not for you. Comments plugin. If you want comments under your pages or posts, you will have to use a special plugin and convert each comment into a GitHub pull request so you can review and publish them. This way, comments are stored right in the static page itself, which is pretty good. However, people will have to have a GitHub account to be able to comment. It will also result in hundreds of pull requests per day if you have a major discussion going on. Jekyll is limited. If you want to go with Jekyll, you will soon realize that it is meant for simple-ish websites and blocks. It has very basic page routing support, very primitive RSS plugin, etc. However, you can use other frameworks like React, which can compile down to static HTML plus JavaScript, so you can get around these limitations. But this adds complexity again. Trailing slashes. GitHub pages add trailing slashes to your pages, as if they were directories. Say if you have this URL, or this URL, they will be served with the URL like this, with the trailing slash. I really do not like trailing slashes, but it appears to be how GitHub Pages servers are configured. According to my research, there is no way to get rid of these trailing slashes at this moment. 100 megabyte limit. You cannot upload files bigger than 100 megabytes to GitHub. You might also get throttled if you are eating a ton of bandwidth. However, you should already use a content delivery network if you want to host big files or videos anyway. GitHub Terms and Conditions You are bound by the GitHub Terms and Conditions if you are hosting on GitHub pages. No illegal files, GitHub can terminate your account with no reason, etc. You know, the usual deal. Now, the alternatives. Google Sites For non-techies, Google Sites is my go-to advice. It is free and very easy to use. It has templates and themes that are fit for many purposes. You can drag and drop boxes around to change the layout of your pages. You can drag and drop images and other files to add them to your pages. And you can import text from Google Docs or just type it. Blogger.com and WordPress.com If you want to create a blog rather than a regular website, these two fit you better. They are specialized for blogs and you have many plugins to help you if you are a regular blogger. If you do not do blogging frequently, edit complexity is not worth the effort. Note that these two have free and paid versions. Roku and Firebase. All these three are meant for developers and will require coding. In return, you will get the ability to access database and other services via server-side scripting. They all have generous free tiers for personal and basic business needs. GitHub Pages Setup and how I created Quantic.com. Now that we know what GitHub Pages is and what it is not, let's go ahead and deploy our first website from scratch. If you do not have one, start by registering an account with GitHub. Continue by creating a new project for your website. Do not forget to check the checkbox that says initialize this repository with a readme. If you do not do that, you will not be able to edit your website through GitHub's UI. If you want, select a license while creating a project. If you do not select a license, it means you reserve all the rights to your work. 
Once your project is created, click on the little pen icon on the right side of the README to start editing your website. Edit the title and body of your homepage, which is the readme.md file, and click the Commit button at the bottom. After you are done, click the Settings button at the top of the GitHub repository. Scroll to the GitHub Pages section and click the Sources button, and select Master Branch as the source of your website. After that, scroll back to the same section to see the full URL of your newly published website. Click on it to visit your brand new website. Optionally, you can select a theme for your website. You can skip this if you are planning to keep your website simple or plan to add your own styling later. Again, optionally, you can assign a custom domain to your website. Follow the instructions provided in the GitHub Pages documentation if you plan to do this. The documentation link is in the video description below. Optionally, copy your website's URL to the GitHub repo description so you can access it easily. You can add new pages to your website using the Create New File button at the home of your GitHub repository. You can create directories through that UI by simply typing forward slash into the file name field after typing the directory name. I recommend always nesting your new pages in directories so your links will work both in GitHub UI and on your domain. As an example, create the following as your new web page. Another page forward slash readme.md. If your file name is readme, it will be rendered by default in the GitHub UI. You can link to your new pages using simple markdown syntax like this. HTML equivalent of that will be just a relative link with the URL and other page. I will not go into the details of deployment of a React app to GitHub pages, but to verify that it can be done, I did it, and here is how it looks. If you want more information on React plus GitHub pages, documentation is in the description below. Now, my recommendations. Try to use plain HTML if possible. Markdown is also a good option, but it also adds complexity as Markdown pages will be rendered through Jekyll. React and other statically compilable frameworks will give you the most flexibility, yet they are the most maintenance intensive ones. If you are not a developer, simply use Google Sites, Blogger.com or WordPress.com. In conclusion, GitHub Pages is an amazing and free tool for developers and technical people who want to put up a static website with minimal work. If you need anything else, it has good alternatives too. As always, write down your requirements and see if your hosting provider satisfies them. If GitHub Pages satisfy your requirements, it is great and I highly recommend it. As always, if you like to see future technical guides, do not forget to sub. If you like the video and want more similar content, give the video a thumbs up so I'll know. And I'll see you next time.